Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So we finally hit 1000 subscribers. And for that, we are very, very grateful for everyone who's been watching the videos, enjoying them, liking, commenting, subscribing, you name it. We're really grateful that you guys enjoy the content. So this week, we're going to be talking about producer surplus. As a couple of weeks ago, we talked about consumer surplus. If you wanna take a look at that video, feel free. We'll link it in the description. With that said, let's get into things. So as I mentioned, we we made a video on consumer surplus a couple of weeks ago and we derived that. So let me label this supply and demand graph and we'll go from there. So this right here is our optimal or equilibrium price, which is P star. And down here we have Q star, which is our equilibrium quantity. And we said, let me just change colors here. And we said that consumer surplus was this triangle right here. That was, it was below the demand curve above the price curve. And so that forms this triangle right here. And so this triangle right here is my consumer surplus. Now I wanna look at producer surplus. And so this time I'm just gonna show you on a supply and demand graph. We're actually gonna cover the algebra behind this next week. When we're talking about producers, we're talking about the supply curve. So in this case, we're going to ignore the green demand curve. We're gonna focus on the red supply curve. So first off, what is producer surplus? Well. Producer surplus is the benefit that sellers receive when the price that they receive from the consumer for buying the good is more than the bottom dollar price they need to produce and offer their good for sale. So essentially, normally we read the supply curve as, here's the price, how much are firms willing and able to supply at this price? Well, this amount that they're able to supply depends on the producer's costs. The supply curve in this case tells us the lowest price which producers will accept to supply a specified amount and the price has to cover the producer's cost to produce the quantity, otherwise they won't sell it. So for example, if it costs a manufacturer $10,000 to make a brand new car, obviously they're not going to sell it for less than $10,000 or they're not making a profit. However, the rock bottom price that they could sell it for would be 10,000 and in that scenario they would break even. Obviously this is an unrealistic example, but it just helps put the question into perspective. So producers like consumers have a reservation price or a willingness to sell, which is the lowest amount of money they would accept for their product in order to sell it. This price is a reflection of their costs and so high cost producers, so producers who have very expensive products to make obviously need to sell their products with a high, for a higher amount of money to recover those costs. We can see the producer's reservation price by looking at the supply curve. So the supply curve reflects the firm's costs as it indicates what the price has to be in order for producers to actually supply the good. Producer surplus is the area under the price that they sell at, so under P star, and above the supply curve, so above the supply curve is right here. And now we have a new triangle. And this right here is the producer surplus. So now all it would take is some simple algebra to actually calculate the values here. And all you would need to know are a couple of key values. That is the value of P star, the value of Q star, and these two intersection points right here, where the supply curve intersects the price axis and where the demand curve intersects the price axis. And with this information, you can calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus every single time. Next week, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. And essentially, we're going to be looking at this producer and consumer surplus, except with real values and see how we can algebraically calculate it without even drawing it if we don't want to. Well, that's it for this week, guys. And once again, we're really grateful for the support that you've shown us so far on the channel as we finally hit 1000 subscribers. As usual, if you enjoy the content, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economic topics and or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.